What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm really excited to share this project with you. It's a self-hosted web-based emulation for playing retro games on your Raspberry Pi, and it all runs in a Docker container. Now, I do know that you can install RetroArch or RetroPie on your Pi and run everything that I'm about to show you, and probably with less problems. But the great thing about this is that you don't have to move the Pi around. You just load a web page and play games. I mean, how cool is that? The best part is if you use a reverse proxy, you can play these games from anywhere there is internet. I absolutely love this idea, and the use case that immediately comes to mind is to play a game or two over my lunch breaks or coffee breaks. Okay, let's get right into this one. So I came across a project on linuxserver.io and was immediately intrigued after reading the article. I had to try it. I mean, it contains 30 built-in emulators and supports x86, ARM v7, and ARM v8. Wow. As I previously said, you can just install RetroArch or RetroPie on your Pi, but you'll have to transport the Pi and everything else required to get it functioning on any devices you wish to use it on. And this is limited to that device only. Now, aside from the reverse proxy, if you want to play a game and someone else in the house wants to play a different game, don't you think that speaks for itself? I mean, two people can load games off of one Pi. That's pretty awesome. Okay, I'm going to use Yacht to deploy this container, but you can also use Docker Desktop, Portainer, or the Docker command line. I've included a link to my Docker Compose file on GitHub account below, but it's also available in the emulator.js docs on GitHub. If you don't know how to get Docker installed, then check out my last video here, where I show you how to install it on a Raspberry Pi along with Yacht that you see. So I'm just going to log in. I already have the container up and running, which you can see here, but I'll go through the process and show you how to get it installed because I am running it from a template. Also on my GitHub page, you can see the emulator.js.json file, and that is what you need for the template. So in order to load the template, we just click new template, we give it a name, And then the URL here, what we do is click on the emulator.json file and then click on raw. Once the raw file loads up, just copy the URL at the top and back in Yacht, just paste that in and hit submit. And it's telling me that the template already exists in the database. But this is what would happen. The name that you gave it, it would give it a title. So if we click into that template, we can view all of the settings for it. We can deploy it. It does take some time to download this one. So that is why I've gone ahead and preloaded it. Okay, so we got our template set up and it's visible in the template section. Now all we have to do is, like I said, click on the deploy. So if you do have any issues with this, you can see in here that the image is using the semicolon latest. And if you have a problem, it might be due to it not automatically downloading the correct architecture type. So all you have to do when you do hit deploy is make that change here in the latest and you would follow what architecture is supported. And if we go to their GitHub page, and in the readme, you can see here the tag that you would use, AMD64 and version tag, or ARM v8 or 32-bit ARM v7. Okay, so mine is already deployed, so I'm just going to go back to the dashboard here. And we can see that the container emulator.js has been deployed, which is fantastic. 
And we can see that this container is, I'm only using a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4, and it's taking about 53% of its memory to run this container. So before we begin loading the application, let's discuss the ports that we mapped or that are mapped in the template or Docker Compose YAML, depending on what you chose. The first port is 3000. If we just go in, we can see port 3000 here. And this serves as the management interface and it allows you to generate or manage configuration files and get the artwork for your ROMs as well as upload the ROMs to the container. The following port is 80, which is going to be the front end for browsing and playing your games. And the last port is 4001, which is the IPFS peering port if you wish to participate in the P2P or peer-to-peer -peer network to distribute front end artwork. Wait, what? IPFS? What the hell is that, you may be wondering? Well, IPFS, rather interplanetary file system, is a protocol and peer-to-peer -peer network that is similar to BitTorrent for storing and accessing files, websites, apps, and data. Don't worry, I know you're eager to learn more, so I've included some useful reading below. And finally, a word of caution from the developer. So if you're going to be running this from your Xbox, it says, please click the select button several times after beginning a game on Xbox to verify that the B button does not cause a back action in the browser. And this is going to be the two small squares with the official name view button. Holding the start button for three seconds will exit the controller mode and return you to the browser controls, the three lines that have the official name menu button. You won't be able to use features like save states or adjust controller layouts for the time being, but all normal game saves will work as long as you quit the gameplay screen cleanly with the B button for back, which includes multi-disc games for the PlayStation. So your game saves are stored in browser storage by host name. Thus, any changes to your local hosted setup, port, or IP will affect the game saves. Keep in mind that these are full-fledged machine emulators running in JavaScript in a browser, so don't expect bare metal performance. But I have played around with it a little bit, and from what I can see, runs not too bad. Okay, finally, what you're here to see. But another thing is that you will have to supply your own ROMs. And however you get these is your business. To access the service, you just use the address, which is your host IP, and the backend service can be reached at your host IP port 3000. So let's first look at the backend so that we can see how we get our games in. So when we come, you won't have any of this here. The first thing you do is go into File Management and then select a game or a console. So let's see the N64 because I don't have anything in there. So then you double click on the ROMs, right click and go upload. You choose the file to upload and let it upload. It will show up in here. Next, when you click back on ROM management, it'll pop up like the Nintendo Entertainment System here, and it'll say, it'll identify how many ROMs that you uploaded and whether or not they're scanned. So if I had just done this, the ROMs would say seven and scanned would say zero. So you just click on scan and it will scan those games. Once the games are scanned, then on the side here will pop up the Nintendo Entertainment System. So if you click on that, then from here, you can click download all available art and it's gonna go out and download everything. Once it is downloaded, just click on add all ROMs to config. And that's it. That gets the games into your system. There is config management for all the emulators. So you can change any of this information here. You can see that the emulator that it's using is the Libertro FCE UMM. I haven't played around with any of those settings. I just left them at default. All right, so let's load up the front end. So that's just going to be your IP address, which is port 80. So here we can see it load up. 
Now, I don't have a controller at the, this current time for testing. I just have my keyboard. And so far, going through the key mappings, I have figured out that the start button is enter and your two other buttons is Z or Z and X. And you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard. You can put this into full screen and using the arrow keys, you can go through You can go through the different types of games here. I haven't found the volume, so I do apologize. I will, post-editing, uh, bring the volume down a bit. So let's just load up a game. Okay, so you can hear that the sound is a little bit choppy for whatever reason. I think it's due to how I'm doing the screen capturing. Because uh, in my tests, when I haven't been screen capturing, the audio has just been fine. And I cut the audio because I'm not too sure if I'll get a strike for that or not. However, <laughs> we can see I'm just as good at Mega Man as when I was young. And I won't put you through too much pain and we'll just cut this off and continue on with the rest of the video. All right, so enough of that. So as you can see, there are a couple of games that I have loaded up into here. Some of them I've gotten to work fairly well, uh, and some of them not so much. All right, so if you made it that far in the video, I really appreciate that. I hope this was exciting for you as it was for me. I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.